everyone welcome to the only program that articulates the voice of women and articulates their issues affecting not just women but their children and their families my name is rebecca iwa and i welcome you once again and the decision to marry is about the most vital decision you can make in your life the decision is right it will positively affect all other areas of your life but if it is wrong it can destroy your life your ministry and destiny and it can even affect your generations yet unborn the marital web is what we take a look at with reverend counselor george lutrot the ceo of work consult and a relationship expert and gifty gazi who is a young but married woman and a businesswoman as well <laughs> this is a very interesting topic i know we haven't started but <laughs> if you were here in the studios with me reverend was <laughs> trying to find out certain things from us but you because it's a women's platform let me give gifty the go ahead first i i know you do that exactly so i came with that idea gifty you're welcome <laughs> thank you gifty when when it, it comes to marriage or the whole thing pertaining to the marital journey the web and all of that must you attain maturity before you enter into marriage of course yes well um, maturity is very important, but the world depends on other factors too, because you can't only depend on the fact that you are matured and say that, well, I'm ready because I'm matured, I'm ready to get married. Of course, a lot of things come to play. Maturity is important, but other factors come to play. So at least you should be matured in a way, for me, you should be matured in your age, maybe financially, be a bit sound. And then other factors will also come to play. Maturity is very important, but other factors too matter. Okay, so Reverend, what are these other factors that come to play? Well, thank you so much. Good evening first to my well, lovely wife. And uh, this is to her. thank her for my including line. I've told her that the day she decides to leave me, I'll commit internal suicide. But she will leave me to so I thank her. This so is much. a free advertisement, <laughs> Reverend. And I, 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 well, I will make sure. <laughs> this is not my wife, like I won't come. <laughs> my marketing people take that money from you they before you go. My wife, she will leave <laughs> Well, oh. she just said a very nice thing that you need to be matured. Uh, that's that's the most important thing. Age is not just a number, like some of you, the women have taken it to be. Age is an important factor in your life. So every human being must behave according to your age. So we say that if you want to get married, specifically in Ghana, if you look at our structure carefully, when you're six years, you're in class one. So ideally, we believe that exactly by 22, you find yourself in a university. So 24, 25, you're getting out to do national service. One of the things people don't know is that when you're doing national service, you don't marry. Why? Hey, you want to commit suicide. Marriage is not meant for national service persons. Well, somebody might say, hmm. No, maybe the person is matured enough. The Define person maturity. has the, the, the finances and all of that. No, it is subjective. You no, know I'm saying? So, you wait, thank you. People will tell me it's subjective. But let me, that's why I like people who can get us through where the argument for people to understand. I'm saying that 25 years, a beautiful lady, you now finish your university. You are serving national service, 26. Is that not it? Mm -hmm. After national service, before you make a decision to marry, you should complete your singleness. Don't allow anybody to truncate your singleness with marriage. So enjoy your singleness and see that you are valuable by yourself without anybody. That's the thing. But if somebody comes and ride with him after university, you graduate, the next thing in your life is to marry. It's the wrong reason for marriage. But Reverend, mm -hmm. let, let's, let, let's hold on here. Yes. I know for a fact that uh, uh, when it comes to, in terms of age, mm -hmm. um, you, you are looking at the, the straight route, but there are people who go into the university with, um, more matured, let me say, in terms of age, than the, the usual route you, you are ascribing to. Thank How you. about so, those people? Now, so let me say that students don't marry. Maybe you want to hear it that way. If you are a student, you are supposed to concentrate on your books and not marriage. Marriage is not meant for students. That's it. That's a simple thing you want to hear. But I'm saying that in the normal stream, not somebody who has gone to struggle and now want to go, the normal stream, after 25 years of age of a woman, it is not an age for marriage. That's the, that's the truth. Okay, so back to my question. Must you have attained the level of maturity? Yes, the maturity before. level is where you have been able to live your single life, enjoy your single life, and make all your mistakes in your single life to build yourself. 
If you've not enjoyed your single life, never think of getting married. Okay. And there are things that you, a woman, must acquire during your single life. That is not the same thing a man must acquire. You understand? But this is a, this is a challenge we have now that young girls complete university and the first thing they tell you is that now nah, it's ready for marriage. Or they get job to do first year they want to marry. No. The first thing you think of doing after getting job to do is not marriage. Enjoy the labor of your hands. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying here? Right, right. So it's part of the maturity stage mm. of your life. Be able to take care of yourself. Then you can move ahead to think of marriage. Like a man, I keep saying that no woman like this beautiful woman here, like yourself, who is struggling to you know, stay focused for God to go to heaven. Never marry a poor man. A man who cannot feed himself three times plus snack. Common snack like soboro, granite, coconut. They are not qualified to marry. So when a national service person <laughs> proposes to you, mm. he's insulting your intelligence. Or somebody doing attachment in GBC. That's a shame. You get what I'm talking about? Because you need to arrive to a certain stage where you've gotten to where you can feed yourself, provide shelter, then have the taste and the desire to seek for a woman to marry. So that is where maturity comes in here. All right. So um, you, you, you're agreeing that the maturity should be the, the key factor before. It is. Yes. But uh, on the issue of somebody doing attachment, for all you know, the person is, the person has everything already. But what is imagine, everything? Uh, as you're saying, you must be sound financially um, wh when it comes the, uh, to things of like thinking and all of that. You, you have to be there. So why not doing attachment? Oh, in the journey of life, it is not that smooth. Okay, so you so are not getting employment. You know, mm. So if you are not employed, you don't marry. You are not looking for employment. No, 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 no. no. Yes. <laughs> let, me just let, let me bring in Gifty. <laughs> Do you agree with all that Reverend is saying? Well, what Reverend is saying, to an extent, I would say is true. But then, um, it depends on the individual. That is your opinion, I would say. No individual. Mine is not for individual. <laughs> Reverend, let's get to have it. Go that ahead, is, sorry. That is your opinion. <laughs> yes, my dear. But let's say, like you're saying, there are people who are married and they are still in school. Trouble. Go ahead. <laughs> and a, secondly, when, when you say the person should be able to feed himself three times a day, fine. But what about when the person gets financially sound at the age of, let's say, 50 years? Then go What's the use in the person getting married then? Because at the age of 50 years, that is when he's okay. He's got his money to be able to feed a woman and the kids. So are you telling me that that person at age 50 or maybe 50 and above should get married? Yes. Let's say in the case of a woman. Yes, that's when you're ready. Because a lot of things come to play. You because see. if you marry as a woman, if you marry, marry at age 50, that, that means that you cannot give birth Way to beyond women. menopause. No, it's not true. Okay, let, let me so, take this. <laughs> at what age did you marry? When, when did you see Good. your husband? And uh, how did you meet him? At what age did you marry first? Let's I got know. married at age 25. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. And <laughs> how I met my husband, I was really in school. I was actually in school. I came for a, a, an Easter holiday and I met him. And but it didn't start from there and then. The way you're looking <laughs> at me, yes, oh, no, no, no. now look at you. No, no. Look at, look at, look at you. Look at so many people out there watching, and they would want to take that, uh, something out of this. So share your experience so, with us. I met him on an Easter holiday. Mm. So I mean, we courted for some time, and then we got married when I was 25. But what was marrying at that age an opportunity? Or you say it, it was a decision that you ought to make at that time? Of course, looking at the time we have courted, I took a lot of things into consideration. Looking at the time we have courted, and then, me, I'm a Christian. Okay. So looking at my religious background, and the things the Bible is telling me not to, go, not to do, to prevent me from going into those troubles, and all other factors I considered, Actually, it was an opportunity. And secondly, I made the decision that I wanted to get married because, of course, I've come to know the person to some level, some things about him. Because you can never tell me that you know somebody 100%. Because when you get married, that is even when you get the surprises. So I thought about a lot of things. I saw a lot of characters in him that I thought would be good for me. Mm. So it was an opportunity. And secondly, I had to make the decision and opportunity and deciding to yes. Reverend, when it comes to singles yes. it's maybe making the right choice or whatever does it start with prayer 
Thank you very much. Be you a Christian, a Muslim, a traditionalist, a Buddhist, he, whatever, whatever it, religion you belong it to. It doesn't start with prayer. Mm. The last thing you consider before you get married is spirituality. It's not the first. As a child of God, it's the last thing you consider. Okay, let's punch it on that. Now, uh, I just, give to said she got married at 25, is that not it? Yeah. So how old is your husband? Mm, no one is personal. <laughs> that is personal. <laughs> you see, you know, you see, I, I just ask this question because I might, it's not because she's here. Because if he's not here too, I'll say what I'm going to say according to what God wants people to hear. It's not because Gifty is here. Okay. But the truth at times hurts. But I just want to release it. But at 25, Gifty just completes school. And the first thing that happens to you is marriage. Because you're, you, you're able to court within your education time and then still get married. Is that not it? At yes. 25. Yes. So if a 25-year-old man is marrying you, or you are 25 years old, and we say that the correct age balance in marriage is seven years maximum, three years minimum, then it could be that your husband could be 28 years. If your husband is 28 years, ideally, and if he's older than you, three years, then it's 28 years and you are 25 years. A 28-year-old guy in, in Ghana, naturally, has not built a singleness yet. We don't marry to build singleness. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, talking about reality. So the age of the man is important, including your age as a woman. So for me, Gifty is lucky, fortunate. I pray this marriage will work forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I know amen. you're going to say amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but the issue is that, the issue is that, when the man's age and your age are the same, there are challenges. When the man is older than you, less than three years, there are challenges. Okay, we'll come to that. So you see. You'll come to that. But um, what I wanted to find out is, once you, you are single, maybe that's getting married really starts with a prayer. No, it doesn't. You said it ends with a prayer. No, it why doesn't should start that, with prayer. Why should that like be? Like she made a statement that because the Bible mm -hmm. says so many things and she wants to really leave, she, she wanted to marry. I keep telling people that if you run away from fornication to go and marry, it's the worst decision you've ever taken in your life. It's not the right decision to take. Because you need to man uh, manage your self-control. So if I want to run and go and get a wife because I, I feel that I'll fall in fornication and commit se sexual sin, so for that matter, let me quickly marry to cover up. That is the wrong decision. Because I need to be able to stand on my grounds. Many people have, have taken decision to marry because they think in pran annual chin edru e awale. They think their prescribed medicine to stop fornicating is marriage. And today they are married and they move from fornication to adultery. Everything is kept. They have to say hallelujah, muyinyamia ye, osaye yo. Sexual intercourse everywhere because what they think they will get from everyone is not what they are getting from their wife. So there are wrong reasons why we marry. And I'm saying that it could be one of the reasons. So people will marry early. But prayer, as a child of God, is something that is part of you every day of your life. Not because you want to get married. You, God doesn't give husbands and wives. There's no portion in scripture that God gives. The one who can... Look, the Bible says that the, the Bible says God will grant you the desires of your heart. And as a child of God, he tells you do not be yoked with unbelievers. So I believe that at the stage of your life, pay the word of God in you, you know what to choose. That can make you who you want to be mm -hmm. to focus and go to heaven. So it is not your prayer that says the Lord, marry George. That could be worse because most of the prophetic marriages that have been said in churches are today doom and darkness. That's why I say that, look, 90% of the divorce rate in Ghana is caused by the churches. Hmm, we'll come back to that so that you explain further on that. <laughs> you give us a further explanation why you are alluding that 90%. 90%? Yes. Right on yes. the high side. Yes. Mm, of I'm divorces in Look, Ghana. As the eh? lawyers. Most of, most of the lawyers who are having much money through divorce is from the churches. Hmm. Yes, because we don't do due diligence. All churches right. can marry people without their father and mother's right. Pastors are assuming spiritual fatherhood and they neglect to post mother and father and marry them. Would a marriage work? Hmm. Would it work? Okay. Check the register you know and see. We'll come back to that. But Gitty, how did you know that your, your husband was the right person. I know you uh, I <laughs> you disagree with this. Don't worry, we are here. It's not because of, <laughs> we, are really, we are not here to our say. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yes. Okay. But mm, no, thank okay. You. I, I love what you're saying. Go ahead. How did you know that your your husband was the right person at at your age when you got married? Or before you got married, how did you know he was the right person? Um first of all to calm Reverend Darwin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calm me down. My husband is I mean, the gap is more than five years anyway, but okay. um, of course I considered the age because I wanted someone I could respect. 
I wanted someone I could respect. And who respects you back. Yes. Someone I could see as an advisor, a friend. Someone who could, maybe when I'm going wrong, could tell me, please, this is wrong. Go the right way. And I could respect his opinions. So first of all, the age matter was the first thing I considered, in actual fact. And secondly, I thought that he was financially secured. And then he was honest, kind, a lot of factors. I can't even mention all here because, I mean, let's, let's just say we are in the public. So I can't mention everything. But I considered a lot of factors, factors. before I went in for him. Mm, because it's a lifelong thing. Yes. But, Reverend, what does making the right choice entail? What because she, she has told us some of the things yes. she considered. And I know it's, <laughs> it's different from person to person. That's right. Yes. That's so right. Uh, what does making the right see, choice entail? The, the thing is that women especially must understand that the completion of creation is women. And every man, I mean every man, and I repeat, every man who has no wife is incomplete. And is lacking the biggest favor on earth. So those of you who have run away from your wives, go back for them. Shame on you. Yeah. And those of you who have decided not to get your own husband and subpoena people's husband, shame on you. Because there is a particular favor that is released when a man finds a wife. You understand? So you are incomplete. Your life is not solid. So when a woman comes into your life as a wife, everything moves faster. So those of you who think that you are a good businessman and chasing small girls, living with small girls, complete your life. Shame on you. Get your wife at home and become responsible. Have so a wife this is and, and oh, those people. No, those, if you become a concubine, a mistress, shamefully for an honourable minister, you are a shame and a disgrace to womanhood. Say it as it is, because it's becoming common phenomenon. Like you can have an honorable person who is bold enough to be on TV and say that I even have four girlfriends, six girlfriends. I bought this for this person because they don't have manners. You understand what I'm saying? And girls too are giving themselves to that. Go to the countryment area. 22-year-old girl is owning a nice mortgage. What did she do to buy it? You have been born in something like that. So I'm saying that when it comes to decision to marry, what goes into it is that one, you are matured. Age-wise, she said she saw security. That a man can be financially secured enough. So it's not like looking for your father to marry. Because your husband can never be your father. If you are looking for your father to marry you, then become a daughter. But now you are a wife. Many people are losing their mind because they're looking for a father to marry. You know what I'm talking about? Obi wa tisem papa. Obi wa krokrom tisem me papa. So now we have to wonder what's our feelings and pay your bill. Who buy? Who buy bank? You need a husband because the Bible refers to the man who is married as a husband and the wife who is married as a wife and the child in it as what a child. So I'm saying that the qualities that you need to choose. Remember, women don't choose; they accept choices. Oh. That's why I tell the young man, if you are going out with any girl, and every week she asks you, they have an hour right on her for sale. Put her on any of the uh, scales that they are selling and sell her for sale, right on her. But what's the rush for? And you are disgracing womanhood. Why? Because, listen. Shouldn't you ask, because especially when um, your, mm -hmm. your clock will be ticking and all of that as a woman, and mm -hmm. you, you know you're aging. Mm -hmm. And you are with me. Isn't it your right to no, ask? You are with me. At least Article 21 1F uh -huh. demands that everybody, you have the right to information. Okay, so this yes. information, what are you marrying me? <laughs> and not just reasons. <laughs> you need to give me that information because I demand I it. I brought you into a relationship. And we, for all you know, we have been going out for like two years, three years, and the ah, man so not, so do no not seem to be. There's no realistic uh, time for this relationship. Mm. So you are begging me to marry you? No. Not really. But no, what are you doing? not at all. But you need to seek that information so that, that you know where it is leading to. Thank you. Isn't that a right as well? It's a wrong thing because when we enter into it, what's the intent of our relationship? What's the intent? But no, but oh, come in. I, I know some relationships can, can break along the line. Yes, not if it is not been with you for nine years. <laughs> not nine years. Yeah, Reverend, allow you But that means <laughs> not all relationships <laughs> end in marriage. That not is, all must end in marriage. Yes. Some are mm -hmm. talking jolly. So at least, maybe you've quoted for four years. Why are you doing like that? The whole thing Reverend, is, I'm doing the, the, the questioning. <laughs> you are doing the yes. answering. So, so allow gifting. The give whole thing is, yes. you, at least you mm -hmm. have to give the person to, the chance to give you reasons. Maybe there is a reason why you guys are not married at that age, mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So you just, to ask the person is not to force the person, let's get married tomorrow. No. Mm -hmm. But at least you want to know what is going. You want to know if there is a future in what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So at least you should ask. That's you should. You, you have to know that one. Awale me. <laughs> no, that's not the question uh, you are uh, supposed to ask. Uh, that, that is it, because we are Ghanaians, that is what you ask. That's the question. Oh. That baby, yeah, 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 worry. Hey, you should be able to ask. I, I think, know. Reverend, sincerely, I, there are things you need to ask so yeah. that you know. If it's not leading anywhere, then maybe the earlier uh, you cut a short, oh, the better no. for all And then you would have found the other partner. Mm. So, this is my Make point. the right choice. Thank you, my girl. So, I'm saying that if you're going there with somebody, and the first was the Gavin Awari. It means that the person was ready to marry or not ready to marry. The decision for marriage depends on the man. Mm, okay. So you saw the qualities that you want in that young man, all right? Then you allow him to marry you. I think you didn't marry him. Mm. He came to marry you. Mm. And all women must always remember that any man who makes the decision to marry you, you are not the only person in the line. Mm. There are a lot of women in life before they made the decision. But he to marry decided. But he decided to choose you. Mm. And you can never have only one woman to choose a wife. It is it is a crime against humanity. So young men have the right to date more than 20 people at the same time. It's not a crime. Hmm. Reverend, are, Reverend, you, are, you, the are, you, are you giving them yeah, the giving license them. to do... Ah, am I giving them or they have the license? <laughs> no, you are but giving them wait, the license. Wait, wait, wait. When, we, when you talk about dating, mm. Reverend, yes. can't any woman also date... Ah, it's your right to date 24 people, 60 people as a woman. Yes. It's your right. For that, I know. Uh -huh. The, the only is... challenge The only challenge now mm -hmm. is people nowadays misconstrue dating. Mm -hmm. Dating is the first instance where they, they start to kiss, they start to do all that. And when things don't work, they don't know how to get out. Okay. So if you will emphasize on that dating bit, because it, it goes to some extent to affect the marital web no. in the long run. Thank you. At what point or um, that dating point uh, before courting, before marriage, what is that right thing to do at that point? Now listen. So that it wouldn't be as though we, we're giving people the license to go dating and maybe fornicating all, the, all, all about or See, doing all. Thank you because for, there are some people who do not know the essence of dating. Dating So is just give not, us briefly. Dating is not a relationship. Dating is not a relationship. It is fixing time and date to know each other. Taking the demographic data of gifting. That's dating. So if you go out with anybody for a date and a person requests for sexual intercourse, he has res respected you and it must end there immediately. So I mean that you have a lot of people you can date at the same time. Even in marriage, you still have the right to date people. You understand? So in your dating line, that is why you begin to choose people. So dating doesn't include sexual intercourse. It doesn't include sleeping over. It doesn't include leaving part of your dress in somebody's house. It doesn't include surprise visit. It doesn't include all the shame things. Introducing everybody in GBC knows that, Charlie, you are dating George. I mean, those shame things. Unfortunately, that is what we So we that face is with. the wrong thing that we, sh we should stop now. So that you know that you are choosing a, choosing a life partner. And you can't choose from one. You know what I'm saying? So you choose from a lot of people. So I'm saying that that's your right to choose. So don't allow anybody who is dating you to have anything to do with you sexually or behave like wife and husband. You are only right to advertise people who are wives. She has a right to advertise the husband. I have the right to advertise my wife. I can decide to use it as my DP. But not a boyfriend's face on my DP. Not a boyfriend's photograph on my uh, center table in my single room. Obey the wind chamber hall that I have. Then I put your picture there. If the picture is not there, it's a crime. No, these things are, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And that doesn't give you the chance to choose the right person. But the right person first is you. All so right. that answers your question. The Great. right person is you okay but gifty uh, when it comes to choosing do women also have the right mm -hmm. to choose the men they want to become their husbands of course. because uh, there's the saying that uh, th there are people who say um i choose my friends my friends don't choose me can you also choose your husbands and your husbands necessarily do not have to choose you well it depends um the man has the right to choose you and the woman also has the right to choose the man the reason I'm saying that is because, like Reverend said, you have maybe, you are dating five men. Of course, you can't marry all the five. So at least you have to sit down and make the decision. Who do I want? What, what qualities do I want in the man I want to stay with? The man I want to be with for the rest of my life. What qualities do I want in the man? So if I am dating five men at a the time, then I will have to sit down and think and decide. Maybe Kweku is good for me because... At least Kweku is matured. Kweku is at least a bit financially sound, if not all that. Because with that, the maturity aspect depends on the individual. Because there are some people who say that, well, I want to live with a person and struggle with him. Hmm. That is a, the person's decision. You can't oppose it. Suicide. 
and there are those who think that well i should go in for somebody who is all uh, already well, financially sound because i wouldn't know what maybe if i go in for someone who doesn't have money i don't know what will happen if he gets the money because some people change when they get the money mm. so why don't i go in for someone who is already financially sound and then we start from there and it is even surprising to know that those who are not financially secured before marriage give up surprises a lot of surprises things you don't expect them to do because i've heard a lot of stories seen a lot of people go through those things so sometimes the ladies will be like okay let me choose someone who has money already so that we will lead our lives mm -hmm. so that will be okay my kids will be okay so i do i think that it is very important for the woman to choose and that is the same for the men the men to have the right to choose their partners you can't force somebody on Mm, immediately your, your husband chooses you or you choose your husband mm -hmm. then it means all other things must, must be yeah. neglected yeah. right it's, it's not when you choose mm. Mm. when you make the decision that is when you make the decision to agree to a choice exactly Women that is what don't i mean choose. Mm. they agree to choices Men anyway reverend <laughs> That way, um, I think it is also subjective. But <laughs> really any proofs of eligibility, thing. yeah. No. Eligibility. I, <laughs> any proofs <laughs> of eligibility or criteria as far as the institution of marriage is concerned? Oh, yes. The first proof is that the cause of divorce is not what happens in marriage, but what happens before the marriage. So you're married. If you know this marriage, you will break down. You know it before you're sitting here. Yeah. That's it. So the altar will not alter you. That's the first proof. So never marry somebody and say, oh, that's son. No, never try it. Because people will not change. Nobody changes, so, but they bring their reality to bear. So the proof is that the first right partner on earth is yourself. How right are you? Because when you are right, you can attract the right person into your system. So the other thing is that a man who can fully take care of himself, not a man who wants to patch with you in your father's house to finish building his house. Look, I tell women, any man who says, eh, go hide a man, hide, don't rent now. Eh, let me add my money to your money to rent so that we marry. It's a disappointment. <laughs> Reverend. Listen. Reverend is being strict. Very strict and Listen. straightforward. Listen. Most women today are struggling. And we are talking about women's shows. They are struggling to be timelines. Because in their homes, they've been given what to pay. Husband is paying fees. Wife is paying electricity bill. Where is that written? Where is that written? It woman's money is her money. Every woman who is working and earning 40 billion a week is her money. It's a man's money that runs the home. She chooses voluntarily to use the money to do what she wants to do to. But now what's the system now? Women are just equally working. That's why they are requesting that you to go to the kitchen. But the head of the family is the man and must be able to provide everything. So meeting yourself, the proof is that this man can really take care of himself. Fully, and then can decide to take care of me. So is that proof? You understand? Mm -hmm. A man. The other proof is that a man who is connected to his family, not a man who is disintegrated from his family. He doesn't talk to his mother. My man, shame. My father, shame. Now my father, shame. You're going to find out. I mean, they tell you everything. If you want to bench, you want to enjoy this marriage. Never talk to my mother again. People like that. <laughs> They're disaster for marriage. So this are proof. So you can see it clearly. So divorce is avoidable, and divorce is permissible. Wait. As for me, I endorse divorce. Oh, Reverend, a man of God. I am, the Bible never said God has God hates God doesn't want divorce. He okay. hates it, but we'll, he we'll come back it. to that. But let's let's quickly go on to our WhatsApp platform. And I have very interesting comments coming in. This one is um coming from um oh, we don't have your name, but the person is writing this from Kwashiman. He says, In fact, I love this program, keep on doing it because it is helping a lot. What is reverence? What Reverend is saying is right, but not all men get money before they marry. Okay, this one is coming from somebody in Kwashiman. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. And um, hmm, Mauli, <laughs> Mauli says, My question goes to Reverend. At what age should singleness end? Okay, Mauli, Reverend will try to answer that. This one also says, I totally agree with the Reverend Minister because people are claiming that after praying, God will reveal your partner for you to marry. What about if you meet a mad person in your, in your dream and the pe <laughs> you are told that it is your husband-to-be or your wife-to-be? 
This is no funny. It's no funny. <laughs> but it's very serious. <laughs> in fact, I, I am carried away by Reverend's thoughts. Please, can I have his number? Okay, we'll talk about that one later. Uh, confidence from one says, Madam, I really like this program. I'm really enjoying it. But I do not understand um, her till I break up. Oh, no, we can't get it. But I think it's talking about when singleness must end. Must the end. person is writing this from... Um, and this one... Oh, I think this one says... <laughs> the person has started laughing already. Riches. <laughs> Riches have nothing to do with marriage. Your partner may be poor today, but rich tomorrow. Remember, God is the great provider. You didn't add your name. I would have loved it if you added your name. Okay, but Reverend. But the statement is not meant for marriage. It is not meant it's for meant marriage. It's meant for faith in the Lord. Okay. You, you understand? God will provide. The Bible says that if you are with God as a child of God, in the book of Second Timothy, you am right in Second Timothy, yes. Okay, yes. It says clearly that if you, you are not able to provide for your family, you have denied the faith and you are worse than a non-believer. So many of these boys are working in the church. As I'm a bearers and prayer warriors, Cabo Bobo, Cabo Bobo, and they give them wives to marry, they can't take off them. Their children don't go to school. The women are doing everything. It's a shame. They have denied the faith. So God doesn't provide for you to take off your wife. You need to be a man who is secure. He says you should be able to take off your family first. Your so don't wait, don't don't wait for miracle to marry. If a prophet has given you a prophecy that this is your husband and the guy is not working, tell the prophet that you <laughs> are Gifted. <laughs> How about if um, there, there is this man, maybe, uh, you know, this man with all the bad qualities, but maybe because of love, yeah. would you want to say, okay, I will tie that nuptial knot with the man? Please, it because is a recipe for disaster. Thank you. Don't even try. Because money is not everything. Well, the Bible says money answereth all things. That's true. But the Bible didn't say money can prevent you from being killed. Somebody will enter a marriage because of money. Maybe there is something happening in the home, domestic violence, something, something is going on in the home. But because of the money, the woman can't speak. And a, a perfect example is that I knew this couple who were married and the man was impotent. Edwana Jones, me in you in Okay. But because of the money, the lady went in. Hallelujah. And this man was taking this lady up and down. He would, uh, she, uh, he would give her, um, like, maybe two years to London, go and come. Two years to US, go and come. Not knowing the lady was suffering. And do you know how they were, they got intimate? I don't want to talk about it right now. It will be it a was subject very, for another day. It was very horrible. And the lady suffered it for about four years. And couldn't bear it anymore so she had to come out and say that no i can't bear it anymore because i'm not having kids and i'm suffering but because of the money i can't leave but today i'm making the decision to leave so it's not it's not all about the money you must consider a lot of things there are bad characters some men are bullies people you you hear people slapping their wives between them you know and so the example is not only to the wife but to the kids if you have kids in the marriage you are serving the wrong example. You are telling your son that when, when you get married, it is right to beat your wife. That is what you are telling your son. So when the person has a bad character, please, for me, it is a no-go area. Mm. M making the wrong choice, Reverend, is fraught with a, a lot of perils. Yeah, the wrong choice starts from the beginning of your relationship. Now watch this young guy are going out with. The slightest thing, you are chatting with him on a date and then you just mentioned Rebecca. Why? My culture will say, Ope say, Nigeria. Sabah, you did. Why can't we have our time together? Get up, let's go. Then you start begging. Oh, I'm sorry. What? It's a sign to tell you that there are places you are going to mark for you in the house, you won't go. So, the sign of people being very rebellious and abusive, no abusive person comes out only in marriage. They show you the sign. Get out of my car. Walk out. Get up, let's go. And you are begging. No, there is nothing that will happen to you. It's happening to you now as you are watching us. That was not there before. Prayer doesn't change things like this. I say if a man wants to marry and has a bad character like you said, like you said, let him change. And when he finishes changing, he shouldn't meet you to marry you. He should get a new person to marry. <laughs> but is this head can can we overcome this head or these perils when they draw its ugly head? 
Mm. Is it something that we can overcome? Why not? Mm. Once you see, you see, everything is avoidable. Uh, okay. You can easily overcome it. Now listen, I'm going to get married to you. And my mother says that he doesn't want me to marry Ewes. Because he doesn't like names like Batu, Babatu. So the names are the reason why he doesn't want me to marry an Ewe. Then I would not even tempt them to take an Ewe to the house. You understand? But they take Ewe to the house and say, We are all Christians. We are one body in the Lord. <laughs> and you have to understand. You are jumping what head though. They say no. And he said no. Your father says, I will not go into that church to go and marry you. Then the pastor says, your father is a wizard. It's a heaven you can jump. They say, no, can we settle it? You see, the church is assuming a position as if they are super magnified spirit. I don't know the terms they are using. And taking marriages out of the house, that must be. Look, three days ago, I mean, two weeks, three weeks ago, I heard, I go, I go away, one boy, I go away. There's a church behind me. Engagement things were being carried to a church to perform engagement. With a pastor in clerical, I wept and I prayed for forgiveness for him. Because he doesn't know what to do. Shame like that. A man will leave the father and the mother. So young ladies, headers can be jumped. If your father is in anywhere far in Accra, in Ghana, and the man wants to marry you, never pay for your father's transport to come down here and meet the man. Let the man go three days journey to go and meet your father. And that will bring a change. So that header is jumped. And any time your father tells you, I don't like this man, sit down. Discuss with your father. So heavens can easily be jumped. Great. Don't keep them and design like in any don't pray. I say prayer is the last thing. Remember I said it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you see, let, let me bring you in here. Reverend made a very essential point when it comes to tribalism and religious matters in marriage. Let's talk about it. What is your take on that? For tribalism, I think that you can't run away from it. You can't run away from it because I am a fancy. And, well, I wouldn't mention any tribe, not to cause any problems. Mm -hmm. But from where I am coming from, you cannot just marry anybody. Yeah, the fancy from just marry any guns. The marriage will not stay. The marriage will <laughs> Reverend, are you a guy yourself? Me, I'm a guy. But the uh, guns are sanguine. <laughs> fancy are phlegmatic. No, but uh, you know that a lot of aunties marry guns. You know why? <laughs> because Atabia, they don't think about property. And because the guns, the because if you... <laughs> Okay, let's give you a point. You know that when you take Conclude us back, with your fanties point. and guns yeah. are almost the same thing. Yes. Because you, you yeah. come from the coastal it's, it's, line. It's, it's, yes. Yeah. That's why so your marriage doesn't last. Agree. No, your marriage doesn't last. You have to go on with your point. Religious and tribal matters, it is something that is really destroying a lot of marriages or even from the stats. Yeah. Mm. So for tribalism, you can't run away from it. Um, that is, you have to go back to your, the whole thing goes back to the parents. Good. Marriage goes back to the parents. Okay. The parents of the man and the woman will have to agree that the woman you are bringing in, the woman who is a fancy, my husband is a queen, the woman you are bringing in, do we like the tribe? Do we agree with their ways? Because in Ghana, we have every tribe and the way they behave. So my husband is a queen. So maybe my husband's parents will be like, Okay, you are bringing the fancy woman in. Fanties. Fanties <laughs> like Ngichicho, they will feed, she will feed you well. But Fanties... I'm a dog. I'm a dog. Fanties is a dog. They have their own dinner. perceptions about the various tribes. Yes, mm. so you can't run away from it. They are peacemakers. So you have to give the person who is getting into the marriage a chance, and then you, the, the person getting into the marriage, will have to listen to your background, will have to listen to your parents and your elders. That doesn't mean that when they say you should not go into the marriage, that's the final thing. But at least listen to them and see what sense they are making <coughs> Sorry. before you go in for a, a particular tribe. Mm. And you sometimes there might be a personal reason why maybe your elders or your parents wouldn't want you to marry this particular tribe. Maybe they would, they've had a, a personal problem with them some time past. Maybe a fancy man has killed your dad, who is a girl. So for personal reasons, you should know, <coughs> you should inquire and know before you choose your tribe. Fine, you will fall in love with the person, but sometimes the mind will have to work too. Okay. Reverend, religious, tribal matters. This is the trouble. Mm. Let everybody marry from your own faith. The Muslims should marry their Muslims. The Christians should marry their Christians. The Eta. Hindus should marry their That's it. Don't cross carpet and come and infiltrate and destroy anybody's faith. You can't tell me that. Well, me, I know my father is a Muslim. 
but I feel a young man called me and said, Well, Reverend, you said something on TV, but I want to tell you that there's always exception. My girlfriend is a Muslim, but she uses the Bible. So what is wrong in marriage? I said, Okay, is your father in law to using the Bible? He said, No, it is the woman I'm in love with. I said, Thank you. Who can if you marry my daughter, I have the right to visit my daughter. Or you don't know about that. Mm. And remember that if you don't like Muslims or you don't like Christians, after all, can you not find Christians and start to marry? Don't go and destroy somebody's religion. Because the thing you don't understand, you go and destroy it. So my own is that when it comes to religion, let the Christians marry their Christians. Let the Muslim marry their Muslim. Do not be equally yoke. Case closed. There's no explanation. Let them be there and be in our place. Because even a Christian don't right now. The Catholic who is praying with roses. Hey, Mary. Mm. And the Christ wants people. Hey. It's a confusion at home. Yes. <laughs> you understand? And a Christian married a Muslim. A small boy was asking the mommy, 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 why is it that in the time daddy wants to be? will go and kneel down and wash the leg. He said, oh, your father is lost. That's what he told. And the boy went to tell the father. Daddy, mommy says you are lost. And that's how the marriage started to fight. Mm. He ended there. They bring, you see, the Christian ladies especially, now they are going wayward, thinking that uh, we are worshipping one God. It's true. But the model of worship is what we are talking about. You go and marry a, a Muslim brother, and then they start giving you the name, Aishetu, Ramatu. Isaka. Then when you bring the boys to church, you tell them, when they ask you what's your name, tell them they are called Isaac. He's called Isaka. Let Allah religion to rest at where it's supposed to be. Muslim are they Muslims, Christian are they Christian. As for tribalism, when you're going to marry, please listen to your family. And that's my fear now. Most of you, the women, who have been impregnated by men who you don't like them, have snatched their children and decided to name their children by yourself. Remember, if your mother's side receive your bride price, the marriage will collapse because they don't have right to receive it. So every man who has impregnated you and is refusing fatherhood, use every possible means on earth to bring him back to responsibility. Why? Is it because of what the Bible says about the man being the head it's or not there's being. a favor? It's not being. Mm. The man is yes. the head. Mm. Nobody else can take that blessing. Look, if your father doesn't give you a blessing, you can't get it anywhere. If your father is a drunkard, there's a blessing in him. If he's a fetish priest, there's a blessing in him. Whoever, Noah was drunk, cursed, it came to land. So all of us should know who our father is. So those of you who are heads and are keeping children from knowing who their father is, I'm pleading with you on this medium that I'm tired of this thing that is happening, that the 32-year-old girl is getting married and doesn't know who their father is. It's a shame. It's a shame. Before you see who are sleeping with their siblings. Because right now, the girls in town today, most of you, 8 out of 10, you prove your love not upwards, lower part. Okay, we rest the case here. <laughs> Katie, how about intimacy in marriage? Is this something that we really need to consider? Of course, yes, Becky. I think you should know that already because <laughs> <laughs> the ladies now are wild. Mm. They are ready to snatch. That one I have to say. The ladies in town, the single ladies are wild. They want to take people's husbands. So, if you are a, a young lady and you are married, and you tell me that, well, when I'm tired, my husband can't have me. Please. It's a wrong decision. Sometimes, it may happen, the worst may happen, that you are sick. Maybe you can not do anything, you just can't do anything about it. Just explain to your husband that this is what is it. But don't be like, made my brain, I can't do it. Like, don't, don't, it is a right in marriage. It is a marital right. So the man must have access to you. I mean, in marriage, mm, great. anytime he wants to. But for me, if I am sick and he come in, I should be able to explain to you that my husband, today I'm not feeling too well. So please, let's make it another time. And the man should respect that because I'm the wife. The man should respect it and allow me rest for at least that particular time. Mm. And then maybe later on we could go on to it. But intimacy itself is very important. It's very, it is collapsing a lot of marriages because mm. let me tell you, the man will come back from work tired and come and look for intimacy in the home. And it's not there. Let me tell you, a single lady is ready to give it to him two minutes in the office. Believe me or not, that is the truth. So it is very, very, it's very, very crucial. It is collapsing a lot of marriages. So please, our young ladies. Okay, but you, uh, right, right, before I come to you, you are a, a, a businesswoman. Yes. Uh, you, you have kids as well. Yes. And your husband, in-laws, all of that. How do you manage all of that? Well, 
I would say that um, it is time management. As a married woman, you should know how to manage your time. You know, sometimes when you, even kids, when you train them, the time they sleep, if you are able to watch it, let's say you know that your kids sleep at seven. If you train them that way, you realize that at seven or latest by eight, they are asleep. So it is always about time management. Look at your time. The time you come back from work, the time your husband comes back from work. There are exceptions though, but most of the times it should follow, it, it should be like the same almost every time. So if you know how to manage your time, the time you go to work, the time you wake up in the morning, you know the time to bath your kids and maybe the husband will take them to school. When you know all these things, know how to manage all these things, then I think that cooking, cook, <laughs> yes, you have to do it because you have taken it. It's a responsibility you've taken. So you should be ready to face it anytime. If your husband comes back from work at 12 p.m., 12 a.m. and tells you, my wife, I am hungry. My dear, you have no choice than to give him food to eat. You have no choice. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> than to give him food to eat. Okay. So it is about time management. All That's right. how I do. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. but right. Reverend, are there surprises after marriage? Yes. Mm -hmm. A young lady had a surprise for the husband. And, uh, the husband started a surprise after the wedding. <laughs> at their honeymoon. Then the husband said, honey, you know something? Then he started pulling his trousers. He said, you see this saw here? I don't feel it too. It doesn't pay me. It's been like this for so many years. But I believe one day, one day it will go. The woman was like, hey, was scared. Then the woman said, okay, <laughs> you know something? She also started. Then she peeled the whole thing off. I've never had hair ever since I was born, Sakura. Then give me a glass of water. Then started, mm, 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 mm. both up and down denture are empty. So surprises will come like that. Not just that. Somebody is married right now for 20 years. He has a child with a maid of honor for 20 years now and she wants to now he wants to announce it to the wife so there are so many surprises okay. that happens in marriage but the thing is that when a surprise comes the ability to stand is what is there anybody can surprise each other but one of the surprises i encourage people never to do is to commit adultery and bring children home infidelity that is a demonic violence? that is a demonic attack to the marriage because when you bring children out of wedlock it's a demonic attack and you have really exposed my sexuality to another person. But well, once somebody got pregnant, it means that you slept with me and slept with somebody with too. Person. Infection has been spread somewhere here, you understand? As for abuse, like she said, and when a man wants it, give him. Please, most women today are being sexually abused with a conscience that if I don't give him, he will go out. Take it. Leave it. Or take it. There is nothing any woman can do to keep the husband home. Nothing. There is nothing on earth any woman can do to keep the husband home. But, but there's grace. every... No, it's no grace. Mm -hmm. Don't no go grace. spiritual, my, my sister. Okay, <laughs> let, let's stay... There's in no the grace. grace. Let, let's stay in, in the physical. There's no grace. Mm. There's nothing any woman can do to keep the husband home. But there's everything a man can do to keep himself home. Okay. So don't abuse yourself sexually. Give them when you're sick. Give them anal sex. Give them a mad sex. Everything. Just because you want to keep them. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you that today is Thursday, is that right? Tomorrow is Friday. We are gathering there, whole of you. You are involved. Mm. All of you who are talking about love issues. All of you in the media. The cameramen. All of you who have been talking about relationship. Mm. Husband and wife. I'm gathering you for a national prayer and all night. Mm. Please be there. Let's pray. From 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Okay. The first Friday, we are doing that prayer at the Transcontinental Worship Center. It's just opposite the Palace Supermarket. Spin just run about. Don't miss this. Please come. Let's pray because prayer has its own role to play. The Bible says that one will put out a thousand, two will put out ten thousand. So come, let's pray. When's the last time you held your husband's hand to pray? It's only for a, a partial <laughs> kiss. <laughs> Listen to me. If there's no connection in the marriage and there's abuse in the marriage, I'm pleading with you. Don't die in a dying relationship. 0277 is what the lady was asking for. Okay. 609644. 0277. That is Reverend's number. Yes. Okay, say that again because people want to talk to you. 60. 9644. I am pleading with you. If you are sleeping with somebody's husband, stop. Stop! <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you again. Okay, get to your final words. When you get entangled in this marital web, <laughs> how do you sustain it? So death do you part. <laughs> Just briefly, oh, right because then. our time is up. <laughs> well, I would say that marriage 
it's a very interesting institution. I wouldn't say it's a bed of roses. You face challenges. The decision to marry lies with you. So make the right choice, make a good decision, and be happy forever. Great. Thank make you. the right choice, make the good decision, and be happy forever. The marital <laughs> web is what we have been discussing with Reverend Counselor George Lutrot, CEO of War Consult, and a relationship expert, and Gifty Gazi, a young but married woman and a businesswoman as well. I am Rebecca Well, but remember that it is very important that as you consider the journey into marriage, you understand that there are milestones on the way you need to get through slowly and methodically so that you will reach your destination in good time and in good shape. Bye for now. I'll see you tomorrow. We share the unique stories of women within our society. I see you having a beautiful wedding, but after that wedding, I see you chewing cola nut and weeping and weeping because you can't have kids. Experiences that touch lives. Whatever he allows into your life is for a purpose. And whatever it is, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Imagine somebody who was a virgin, got married, and then the husband was infected and then gave it to me unknowingly. We answer many questions every woman needs to know about their relationships, children, family life, and global events. Women's Voice, impacting the lives of women within our society. Showing every day at 4 p.m. on GBC 24.